Hello, in this video, we're gonna continue our study of identities and we're gonna look a little bit closer. Remember we had sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one. And we said this was because of the unit circle and Pythagoras, right? If we just do a quick recap, we remember on the unit circle that any point will have the coordinates cos theta sine theta. The hypotenuse will be one and because those coordinates could be drawn as a little right triangle, we have cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one squared. And then we simply simplify our formula and we get this. But we used two other formulas. If you remember, tan squared theta plus one is secant squared theta and cotan squared plus one is cosecant squared theta. Now, neither one of these uh, jump off the unit circle, so to speak, but we can actually come up with these pretty easily. They don't come out of thin air. They're not random formulas. They have a, a, uh, a situation. They have an explanation that we could provide for them. And in particular, for the tan one, I want to start with what we do know. We do know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one. This is a true fact. And we're gonna take this fact and we're gonna come up with a new fact. What we're gonna do is divide everything by cos squared. This is a valid move in algebra. We can always take an equation and divide it. So nothing different here. We can divide everything by cos squared and that's gonna give us tan squared plus one equals, well, one over cos squared. We know another name for that is secant squared. And so there we go, our second formula was actually just a rearranged version of our first formula. It's not something new per se, it's just a, maybe a reworked version of the old one. Or you could think of it as something new if you want, uh, but it definitely has a connection to the old one and we're able to justify why it works. Again, we had that third formula, cotan squared theta plus one equals cosecant squared theta. And again, lest you think that this just comes out of thin air, if we took our sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one as our starting point. And in this case, divided it by sine squared theta. Well, we know that sine squared over sine squared will be a one. Cos over sine is cotan, and of course squared. And one over sine is cosecant. So there we go, we have our other formula as well. And so what we were able to do here is take our old formulas and come up with new formulas, which is pretty neat. So what we want to do is explore this vast world of trig identities, because there's actually more than just this formula, this formula, and this formula. But to do it, we're going to need some techniques. And in particular, I want to take us back to maybe something simple. If I give you two plus seven equals three squared, I mean, I know this isn't a formula because they're just numbers, but is this a true statement? Is this statement true? How would you know? How would you justify that this is a true statement? And I think most of you would agree, yeah, two plus seven is the same as three squared. And what you could do is you could draw a line down the middle and you could work on the arithmetic on each side. Two plus seven, well, we know that's gonna be nine. If you wanted, you could put two dots for the two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for the nine, count them up and you get a total of nine. Over here, three squared means three times three. That means you have three groups of three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's gonna get you nine. So is it true? Yes. Two plus seven is the same as three squared. And this idea of kind of working on the one side and working on the other side and showing that you get the same thing I mean, we've, we've done this before. We often will do this if we're verifying a solution, but we could also use it for verifying, let's say a factoring. Let's say I told you that X minus two and X plus two was the same as X squared minus four. Well, the way we would verify this is we'd probably start with that left side. I think the right side is kind of as simple as it could be. But on the left side, we could use FOIL. So we get x squared plus 2x minus 2x minus 4. Then we'd clean up those middle terms and get x squared minus 4. And the left side would equal the right side. Sometimes I write left-hand side equals right-hand side. 
And yes, this is a true formula. And this is the general method we would use whether we're checking to see if some numbers add up, if we're checking a solution in an equation, or if we're checking a general formula. And we want to check this and use this method for trig identities as well. All right, so let's take a look at this equation. Prove that cosecant squared x plus tan squared x equals secant squared x plus cotan squared x. Well, this equation or this formula isn't on the formula sheet, but I claim that it's an identity. I claim that this is a true formula. And what we can do to prove it is we'll draw a line down the middle. Just like if we were doing a check of a solution, we don't want to be actually solving it. That's a separate series of steps. We just want to be checking that it's true. So don't go moving anything from one side to another. Don't go multiplying or dividing both sides. We're, we're just going to be focused on proving it, on, on checking it, if you were. So we have on the one side cosecant squared and a tan squared. On the other side, we have a secant squared and a cotan squared. Well, we, we do know a few formulas that are relevant. For example, we know tan squared plus one is secant squared. So in other words, tan squared x plus one is secant squared. Or another way of writing that is we could write tan squared is equal to secant squared minus one. You kind of want to do that in your head. That's not really part of the question here. But uh, we could rewrite tan squared as secant squared x minus 1. We're going to leave the cosecant squared for now. We won't do anything with that. Uh, now, this is kind of a good thing because if you notice, the secant squared here matches up with the secant squared over here. We've kind of transformed the equation so it looks a little bit like the one on the right. But the one on the right still has a cotan and this has a cosecant. Oh, hey, if you look in your formula sheet, there's another formula we could use. Cosecant squared, we know, is actually directly equal to cotan squared x plus 1. And we still have our secant squared x minus 1. All right, well, now we should see that these plus 1 and minus 1 cancel. So we have cotan squared x plus secant squared x. And because addition can be written in either order, this is secant squared x plus cotan squared x. And there we go, the left hand side equals the right hand side. We've been able to work and manipulate and do steps on that left side of the equation to transform it into secant squared x plus cotan squared x, which is exactly what the right hand side looks like. And if you can do that, if you can rearrange that left hand side to make it look like the right hand side, well, then the left-hand side is the right-hand side. They're the same thing. And if they're the same thing, then indeed we have an identity. It's kind of like this is another name for this. Uh, even though you might not recognize it at first, um, they're the same thing. It's kind of neat. So let's say we had tan squared x times sine squared x is equal to tan squared x minus sine squared x. Well, that's kind of strange. Apparently multiplying them is the same as subtracting them. Hmm. Well, again, what we want to do is start with an identity somewhere. And I know one for sine squared. Again, if we think back here, we know sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. So I could write it as sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cos squared x. So I'll go ahead and do that. 1 minus cos squared x and tan squared x. Now I have some multiplication here to do, uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Seems like a good idea. So tan squared x minus tan squared x times cos squared x. Now this is some progress because this tan squared looks like this tan squared. But this looks like a mess compared to a simple sine squared x. So the next step is probably to rewrite that tan squared. If you remember, tan squared is the same as sine squared x over cos squared x. Well, technically we said tan was sine over cos. So that means tan squared is sine squared over cos squared. Now, why might I be doing that? We'll take a look. 
we have sine squared divided by cos squared times cos squared. You betcha, those cos squareds are going to cancel. So that leaves us with tan squared x minus sine squared x, which is exactly the right-hand side. So the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, and we are good to go. We've proved another identity. Now here's another one, maybe cos squared x, or in this case theta, times tan squared theta minus one is equal to tan squared theta. The thing with identities is it's relatively easy to watch someone prove them. It's a little bit harder to prove them yourself because when you're trying it, you might try something and then it doesn't really work and you have to erase and try something else. And so the thing with identities is while watching someone prove a few can be useful, you definitely have to try them yourself because there's a little bit of technique, a little bit of intuition, and just a little bit of luck when proving them, to be totally honest. So I would really encourage you to pause the video now and give it a try. Even if you don't get to the end, at least substitute in an identity or two. Um, right now, we're just focused on those main ones, right? Sine squared x plus cos squared x is one. I don't see any sines in cos, so I don't think that's gonna be useful. Uh, our second main go-to identity is tan squared x plus one equals secant squared x. That one looks pretty useful because there's some tans going on. And then the third one is that cotan squared x plus one is cosecant squared x. Again, I could see that one being useful too because there's a cosecant. And I can't really tell you, I can't even necessarily tell myself which one is gonna be the correct one. You just sort of have to try one and see what happens. So again, please pause the video and give it a try. All right, so hopefully you gave it a try. I'm gonna go ahead and use that third one. So cotan squared x, well, I guess it's theta, sorry, cotan squared theta plus one times tan squared theta minus one. So we have to multiply that out. So we get cotan squared theta, tan squared theta plus tan squared theta minus one. Now, cotan is the reciprocal of tan. So you could actually write this as one over tan squared times tan squared, which is kind of neat because one over tan squared times tan squared just cancels out. And so you're just left with a one, right? This is sort of like tan squared over tan squared, which is just simplifies to one, okay. Oh, but now we have a plus one and a minus one, so those cancel. And I just have a tan squared left. So the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. All right, let's try another one. Secant squared x minus one over one plus tan squared x equals sine squared x. So again, I encourage you to pause the video and give it a try, see what you come up with. Uh, just so you know, on a test or on an exam, even if you don't get the full solution to this question, if you at least make a substitution of a correct identity or make some progress towards the answer, you'll at least get part marks. And so it's really in your best interest to try a question, even if you don't know how to get the correct answer right away, uh, even doing something will get you some marks. All right, so hopefully you gave that a try. Now we have one plus tan squared. I mean, for me, that one, that looks like an identity. I'm gonna use that right away to secant squared, secant squared x. Now the top, secant squared x minus one. Over here, I've just got a sine squared. So that left looks pretty complicated and the right looks kind of easy. Huh, I wonder what I can do. Well, the secant squared minus one, uh, hmm. I guess I could do some algebra here. Um, this might be a bit of a, a bit of an intense move for some of you, but, but if I had, let's say, three plus seven over three, I could rewrite that as three over three plus seven over three which would then be like one plus seven over three. 
Now you might say, why would you do that, Mr. Peters? Normally we start at the bottom and we make a common denominator and move up to the top. Well, yeah, but if you have two things added on top of a fraction, you can kind of like un uncommon denominator. I'm not sure if that's a word, but, but you can uncommon denominator them. Take, take the two of them that are added together over three and split them up as three over three and seven over three. So let's just do that. Let's write it as secant squared x over secant squared x minus one over secant squared x. And I'm gonna do that because obviously secant over secant is just gonna give me a one. And one over secant, remember secant is one over cos, so one over secant is just back to that cos. And here, maybe it's easier to look at the right side. We know that sine squared has an identity. That's gonna be one minus cos squared. And there we go. Left hand side equals right hand side. In this example, we had to do a couple new techniques. We had to work on that right side, uh, which sometimes you have to work on both sides and that's okay. But we also had to do this interesting algebra trick where we split this and split this. And as we go through this unit, you're gonna see lots of different algebra techniques that you might not have thought of, uh, but many of them are gonna be particularly useful when we're working on trig identities. All right, here's another one. Again, I encourage you to pause the video and give it a try. All right. So when I see this much multiplication like this, my instinct right away is to multiply it all out. So I'm gonna get sine squared times sine squared, which is sine to the four. Then I'm gonna get sine squared cos squared minus cos squared sine squared. Oh, that seems good. Those will cancel and then minus cos to the four. All right, well, like I said, these cancel. So we're just left with sine to the four x minus cos to the four x. Well, that's, that's pretty weird because we have powers of four and on the other side, we only had powers of like cos squared. But if you notice here, these are all coses. So what I'm gonna do is try to convert that sine into a cos, and, and maybe, maybe it's actually nicer if we were to erase this. And instead of writing it as sine to the four, maybe we should write it as sine squared times sine squared. Because then we can see that each one of those sine squareds can be substituted as one minus cos squared. And of course, we still have this minus cos to the four. All right, well, I created more multiplication for myself, so I should probably do that. Uh, one minus cos squared times one minus cos squared. So first, and then outside will be cos squared, another minus cos squared, and then a plus cos to the four. Oh, well, that's convenient. I got a cos to the four as a positive and a cos to the four as the negative, so let's cross those out. And if I have a minus cos squared and a minus cos squared, that's the same as having two minus cos squareds. And hey, look at that. The left-hand side equals the right-hand side. Let's try another one secant squared x over secant squared x minus one equals cosecant squared x. Pause the video and give it a try. All right, now you wanna be careful on this one. I don't know if anyone tried this, but you definitely shouldn't split this up as follows. Okay, the technique that I showed you doesn't allow for this. If you try to split it up as this term and then this term, that's not valid. The rule is that if you have two terms in the top and one term in the bottom, you can split it. If you have two terms in the bottom, you're just sort of left with two terms in the bottom. This is not legit, this is not valid, uh, and it's just honestly not gonna go anywhere. Um, th with this mistake, secant over secant is a one. Now we have one minus, I guess, secant squared is maybe one over, well, you know, one over, cos squared, 
It's, it's, it's just a disaster. So we definitely don't want to do any of that. We definitely don't want to go down that road. Instead, let's try to do something productive. Let's look at that secant squared and let's use an identity on that. We know secant squared minus one is just a rearrangement of the tan squared. So we can write this as tan squared x over secant squared x. And now this looks really weird. So what I recommend, if you have a lot of secants and cosecants and tans, let's convert everything into sines and coses. So cosecant is one over sine squared. Now secant is one over cos squared. And we're dividing, this line means division. We're dividing by tan squared, which is sine squared over cos squared. Now remember when you divide a fraction, you can flip and multiply. If you did this in just one step and went to the multiply right away, that's totally fine. I'm just trying to show all the steps. So we flip the sine squared over cos squared into cos squared over sine squared. The cos is cancel and we have one over sine squared x. And what did you know? The left hand side equals the right hand side. All right, and another one here, one plus cos x over sine x equals cosecant x plus cotan x. Give it a try and pause the video. All right. So I am gonna try that fraction move on this one. One over sine x plus cos x over sine x. And on that right hand side, I'm gonna rewrite those in terms of sine and cos. So cosecant is one over sine x. Cotan is the flip of tan, so instead of sine over cos, it's cos over sine. Oh, I guess I'm done. Left-hand side equals right-hand side. Now, not all identities are this easy, but some of them are just kind of like a one-line question. That was nice. All right, let's take some notes on this. So we are proving trig identities now the basic steps for doing this are you draw a line down the middle then you use trig identities or I guess trig identities from the formula sheet. Then you also use algebra. And then in the end, the left hand side should be equal to the right hand side. That's how you know you've completed your identity. Now, again, uh, maybe this is kind of something to remember over here. So some things to remember. Don't move stuff over the line, right? I never did that, don't do that. Also, don't multiply both sides, All right? If you notice I never did that, don't do that. Um, we're not doing a solving question where you isolate and solve. We're doing a proof, which is a different technique, and you leave everything on the left where it is, leave everything on the right where it is, and just work on each side independently. So for a problem, why don't we do one minus cos theta, one plus cos theta, and I claim that's equal to one over cosecant squared theta. So go ahead and pause the video and give that a try. All right, the quick solution here is you foil it out. So you get one minus cos theta plus cos theta minus cos squared theta. Middle terms cancel. One minus cos squared theta is sine squared theta. On the right hand side, one over cosecant is the same as sine squared theta, and we're good to go. 
And of course over here, you can try one. This is a unit seven worksheet number two. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And as always, thanks for watching.